welcome to the second tutorial on the VEX controller. Today we're going to be discussing motors, servo motors. I'm going to show you what makes them different and I'm going to give you a couple of things to keep in mind to make sure that you don't damage your motors while you're working with them. The first thing you need to know is that when using either a motor module or a servo motor, you must always use this small green clutch. So what this allows you to do is to make much harsher movements with the controller without damaging the motor. If you don't use this, you run a very strong risk of breaking your motor using it regularly. So I've connected the clutch, and now to show you the difference between a motor and a servo motor, I'm going to connect this piece of plastic. Now, this will allow you to see exactly how a motor behaves. This is a motor module, as you can see in the back. And I'm going to connect this to port number one of the VEX interface. Now I'm using the default program in the VEX interface, which means that port one is connected to channel one of the remote control. And port two is assigned to channel two, port three to channel three, and so on. So I've connected the motor module to port one, and you can see when I manipulate the control, the motor turns in one direction continually. This is a motor. And if I reverse the control, it goes the other way, continually. This is a motor. Now a servo motor is a little bit different. Not only is it written servo module on the back, but it behaves differently. As you can see, if I connect this to port one, you can see when I manipulate the control, the motor moves and keeps a p static position. So in effect, the response of the servo module is proportional to the input by the remote control. And this is useful f for chaining um, programmed actions. Or it's also useful for programming daisy-chained actions, and we'll get to that later.